with another collection of weird and wonderful ads from around the world, Jim Davidson's commercial breakdown on BBC One at 10.35. A magnificent setting, two great teams, what drama here. And Seaman, what a magnificent save. Not good. Tuffle's got him. Oh dear. Hey, look at that! And here comes Hurst. He's got some people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over with Phil and Jonathan is a snooker legend and all-round entertainer about whom it's been said laughter is never far away. Unfortunately, neither is Jim Davidson. <laughs> it's John Virgo. <laughs> with David and Rory is a television presenter and motorsports fanatic who recently competed in a 24-hour motor race in Norfolk. The locals were amazed. Hunt Stanton to swap him in 24 hours? It can't be done. He'll suffocate, they said. It's Richard Hammond. <laughs> We kick off the show with a football question. Phil, Jonathan and John, it's publicity shy midfielder David Beckham for you. And here is the England captain in all his white-shirted glory, turning it on for his new employers. But since his transfer to Real Madrid, Beckham has had some terrible luck with a succession of niggling injuries. Mind you, he now knows there's a reason. So what does the golden wonder blame for being cropped so often? Did David Beckham, against all medical advice, attempt once again to finish the Funday Times crossword on his own? <laughs> <laughs> no. Could it be something to do with the fact that he's in Madrid now and Victoria's over in England? Right. And we've all been there, haven't we? What, Victoria? <laughs> I don't know, we've all been in hotel rooms on our own, you oh, know. Oh, yeah, you think oh, he's been watching the movies? Yeah. Well, Repetitive you can, strain injury. You can pull more than muscle. <laughs> in England, if you get a blue movie on the hotel in England, it's terrible. Yeah. There's lampshades everywhere, have you ever noticed? <laughs> yeah. There is, isn't there? In Spain, nothing like that. No lampshades, nothing. Well, nothing I, I suppose it. the yeah. days are longer. <laughs> Do you get any injuries playing snooker, John? No, not really. God, your throat's nearly gone there. <laughs> uh, no? You bend over a lot, which, you know, well, doesn't... Can be painful in well, the wrong, yeah, if you're yeah. in the wrong, at the wrong snooker hall. No, hole. I don't think I... <laughs> I'll the wrong snooker hall? <laughs> Are you suggesting that there is a chain of gay snooker halls <laughs> where you bend over and someone else uses a long rest? <laughs> Well, I think we may be straying away yeah. um, <laughs> slightly. All right, um, I read somewhere, I did read, and I've heard this as well quite recently, <laughs> that um, David was diagnosed with one leg shorter than the other. And that confused him because he went for a second opinion and the other doctor said, you've got one leg longer than the other. So he, <laughs> he didn't know who to believe. Well done, three points. David Beckham puts his problem with injuries down to the fact that his left leg is shorter than his right. The problem, a medical condition called lower limb inequality, was only noticed during his medical for his transfer to Real Madrid. Beckham actually thought it had got worse the following day until little Romeo reminded him he hadn't taken one shoe off. <laughs> David and Victoria are having a church built in the grounds of Beckingham Palace. The builder asked them, do you like the fonts? To which David replied, I don't know, I never watched Happy Days. <laughs> now, during the week, we found this splendid football coaching manual. Here it is. Imaginatively entitled Football and endorsed by our very own David Seaman. Now, reading through it, I was slightly confused. Now, remember, this is David Seaman talking, but it says here... If the ball is too high to catch or too risky to punch, then tip it over the bar! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> why, why didn't you tell me before? Yeah. Beautiful book, that. Actually, copies of this book are very difficult to come by, and we've actually got David Beckham's own personal copy, as you can see from these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> 
OK, David, Rory and Richard, it's a rallying question for you. Have a look at this. Here's Britain's Colin McRae negotiating the tortuous sand dunes during the recent Paris-Dakar rally. But McRae was stranded for 72 hours and the competition suspended for two days as the event neared the finish. So what was it that caused the organisers to call a temporary halt to the race, David's team? Mm -hmm. Had Dick Dastardly put drawing pins on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Big oil slick in the desert. <laughs> yeah, very nice to have that Richard with us. Thank you for joining nice the show. Great to have you from Top Gear. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You're into cars. Aren't yeah, you? I, love, I love cars very much, yes, yeah. obviously. Mm. Now, Jonathan's got interesting <laughs> car. Jonathan's, Jonathan's a very interesting um, car. I've got a new car. I've got the Chrysler Crossfire. Yeah. It looks yeah. like the Batmobile. It's very fast. It goes from 0 to 60 in half a second. He wanted a Robin Reliant, but he couldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, that is the single what, what worst... A... Why on earth have you got a Crossfire? It's a Seriously. good car. It's a fast what, car. Richard, it's a good car. It is, well, I mean, how many, a car can do only so many things. It can, it can go... It which, does that? No, it's rubbish. What? It, <laughs> it's a woman's car oh, based oh, on a girl's yeah, Mercedes. Yeah, well, that's it's all right, then. It, well, is, that, that, it, that it works for me in a big way. If you've got chickens, you could keep those in it, or you might use it to prop a big door open. What car do you drive? You're a small fella. You've probably got one of those little smart cars, haven't you, Nippon Mountain? <laughs> no. I've got, a, I've got a, an elderly Porsche 911. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a driver's car. It is, actually, yeah. It's a driver's car. What the hell is that? You can talk some crap on that show. <laughs> what you don't seem to realise is most of us don't care about an extra blurb of talk or <laughs> how many that extra zentons of power there are in the <laughs> silver <laughs> thing at the front. But we don't care. We want to know yeah. what colour is it, is it pretty, and how loud's the CD? Brilliant. That's all we want to know. Plenty of people don't care about expensively tailored clothes. Fine, you don't have to care about your clothes, but go too far and that's what you end up with. And that <laughs> is... David, what, what, what car do you drive? I drive a Range Rover. You got Range Rover? Yeah, and an Aston Martin. Which do you drive when? I drive my Range Rover when I go fishing. Why is that? Because it's green and it's camouflaged. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, David, people get out yeah. of the car before they start <laughs> fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Not when I fish, you don't. <laughs> the Paris to Dakar. Yes. Dakar is the capital of Senegal in West Africa, yeah, I believe. Is, is that yes. right? Yes. And it's where I spent my honeymoon. Did you? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. Two fantastic weeks. And I sometimes think, if I'd taken my wife with me, I'd still be married. <laughs> <laughs> so why what delayed them? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of mechanical problems on the way, obviously. Really? It was a Scotsman who got stuck, is that right? Colin a Scotsman was stuck for 72... 72 hours. Was he waiting for the price of diesel to come down? So <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pretty good idea what it is, actually. There was a spot of local bother. There was, was, there was banditry going on, as happens on the Paradacca. There was indeed time. banditry going on. And well done. I'll give you three points. <laughs> yes, indeed, the main reason the race was suspended was a fear of bandits. There were reports of army deserters preying on travellers, including rally competitors, and the organisers thought that the safest thing to do was to call it off. The Paris-Dakar rally is a massive logistical exercise involving months of planning, three refuelling trucks, a mobile crane and 150 tonnes of food. In many ways, it's like a Rooney family picnic. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Phil's team have three points and David's team have three points. <laughs> round two is photo fit. Phil's team, this one's for you. See if you can work out who's in there. Whoa, three oh people. God. That was Phil's face when he was told he might have to go back in the jungle with John Lydon. <laughs> <laughs> He looks quite surprised, uh, doesn't he? He does. He looks like he's just sat on a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal footballer. There's not many of them. Lundberg. Freddy Lundkamp. Freddy yeah. Lundberg. Lundberg. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course you can. I know we've got some Arsenal supporters there. So this got one thing next that happened at Old Trafford when the Arsenal team attacked Ruud van Nistelrooy, yeah. I'd, I'd just like an honest opinion of what they thought about it in a sporting context. Yeah. Yeah. When Ruud van Nistelrooy <laughs> dived to get a penalty, which he subsequently and he justified Dying. it missed. Yes. I don't think it was Ruud van Nistelrooy who got the penalty, was it? It was someone else who got the penalty. No, somebody else got the penalty by diving, but out of habit, Ruud Four van Nistelrooy lines. dived as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
You are a devoted Man U fan, aren't you? I am a devoted Man United supporter. Yeah. What's Alex Ferguson like? Because he looks like a bully. Sir Alex Ferguson has a passion for Manchester United, and that's what comes out. He's so passionate about Manchester United, it's a miracle he doesn't live in Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this guy here with red hair, and apart from Freddie Lundberg, I don't really know anyone who's James got... Anderson. Oh. He's the correct answer oh, for all yes. of them, yeah. I've got, yeah. I've got the chin. <laughs> you got the chin? Yeah. Who's the chin? See it chin. now when you go like that. It's Pete Sampras. Oh, Pete Sampras. Mm, maybe. Yeah, it's Pete Sampras when he cried like a baby when they did that big ceremony thing when he quit tennis. Did you see that? Yes. He blubbed like a girl. Did you cry when you were sacked from, uh, when you, when you retired? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> How's your injury, by the way? It's very well, thank yeah, It doesn't you. look to be bothering you at the moment. It's great, look. Yeah. Look at that. It's this <laughs> arm. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the eyes. Who are the eyes? Um, I am Torrance of the eyes. OK. Those are your three answers. I'll give you three points. Very, oh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Let's have a look, see how it works. That was indeed the tousled hair of English fast bowler James Anderson, the well boggle eyes of golfing pensioner Sam Torrance, and the wrinkled chin of former tennis champ Pete Sampras. Pete Sampras has never been tainted by any hint of drug scandal, although his urine was once found to contain suspiciously high levels of PG tips. <laughs> James Anderson is England cricket's rising star and says he knew he'd made it when a helicopter was sent to pick him up from his hometown. And the people of Burnley still talk about the day when the big metal bird swooped down and ate a man. <laughs> a patriotic fan of Scottish sport, Sam Torrance admits that he actually cried during the curling. He swears that next time he'll go back to his usual Brazilian. <laughs> David's team, here's yours. Can you see which... <laughs> Oh, no, it's horrible. <laughs> Who's in there? Which three people are in there? That looks like Jeremy Clarkson's chins. <laughs> <laughs> there's something about... There's no look of a Neville brother about it, though, the whole thing. It's not the, the Neville brother they keep in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that, that's, or... that's Phil Neville. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful oh, season he's having. He's had a wonderful <laughs> season. <laughs> he's <in the> field, <laughs> well. He'll deserve his runners-up medal. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Or is that the guy who keeps Luke Chadwick in the attic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's Gary Neville's eye. Maybe. That's some nostrils on it, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's the bottom. Bloody hell, is it's it? Your it? Angle. It's your angle, that is, yeah. that bottom bit's looking up. It looks yeah. like Dartford Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> the hair, I think, is, belongs to that bloke who runs the FA now. What's he Is name? Stelios Palios or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's easy, Jet, I think. You're <laughs> And the bottom bit. I no idea. That. I'll give you two points, Dan. Let's split them up and see who it is. What we saw there was the prematurely grey flat top of FA enforcer Mark Palios, the I love David Beckham eyes of chippy Man United defender <laughs> Gary Neville, and the ever gaping mouth of constantly injured decathlete Dean Macy. Dean Macy is fiercely competitive and says he wants to be the first British sportsman to break the 9,000 points barrier, a record currently held by Tony Adams' driving licence. <laughs> After David Beckham left Manchester United, Gary Neville was out for four weeks with a mystery injury, eventually diagnosed by club doctors as a broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Neville says that Man United's latest signing, Louis Sahar, will never be able to fill David Beckham's boots. How can he? The boots are locked away in Gary's special love shrine. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, Phil's team have six points and David's team have five. <laughs> we press on with the treble. Phil's team, your subject is the secrets of my success and your trio are... Right. Charisma-free, kicking heartthrob, Johnny Wilkinson. Perpetual snooker runner-up, Jimmy the Whirlwind White. And stumble-footed, big-chin Dutchman, Rude Van Nistelrooy. Is that a hell of a goal or what? A hell of a goal. <laughs> but which one puts his success down to toilet rolls, who attributes it to sponge cake, and who claims The Sopranos lies behind his success? I don't know, but that's a good night in for me. A bit of cake, a nice dump, and then you watch a TV show. <laughs> that is a top night in. You're, you're, uh, you're mates with Jimmy White, aren't you? Yeah, Tom? he's my closest friend. Is he really? Is he seriously, really? Yeah. Have you, you've just come back from somewhere with him, haven't you? Where did you go? Oh, we went to Cambodia. 
<laughs> they all know him over there, which is quite amazing. Do they really? And even in the villages, they've got little pool tables. They, they have these huts, and there's a chair at one end where, where they hair cut. At the other end, there's petrol pump. And in the middle, there was a pool table. Very small, aren't they? And cows walking around and all that. Genuinely, are they really, really Yeah, enjoyable? really, yeah. they yeah. love yeah. pool. Fantastic. Mainly pool, because they can't have snooker toes, because they're too big, aren't they? Yeah. Why can't they just get a bigger hut? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining comic relief run by Phil <laughs> Just £2,000 will buy a snooker table for this Cambodian family. I know for a fact that Jimmy likes this gangster thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so I would say uh, Jimmy's The Sopranos. I love a cake. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Those special ones I knock up round my gaff. That's, why, that's why we lost to the West Indies back then. Yeah, just imagine, if they ever do finally legalise, it's going to be Mr Tufnell's Cakes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he'll have a TV show cooking with, cooking with Delia Spliff. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, mate. What's your favourite cake, Nick? Ooh, you got me now. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, it is a tough one. Oh, yeah. I think oh, vanilla, David, vanilla, 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 vanilla slice. Vanilla slice. Vanilla slice. Cherry Bakewell. Cherry Bakewell. Cake of champions. Cherry Bakewell's like a gay cake. <laughs> Everyone, right, Everyone on this show knows that. <laughs> John says it's an eater's cake, like a yeah, driver's car. <laughs> Excellent. That'll get it. An eater's cake. It can't be Johnny Wilkins on a toilet paper, because he poos only the finest perfume. Yes. <laughs> Maybe toilet rolls helped him to win. Maybe he was in the toilet, reaching for the toilet roll, and he went, oh, hold on, this could come in handy. <laughs> I think the, uh, the cake is rude, as it, to um, give him energy before a game. And Johnny Wilkinson looks like that Labrador that tied it round <laughs> his neck and ran down the yeah. yeah. Either way, you've got three points. Yeah. 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 Good Johnny Wilkinson perfected his phenomenal kicking by hoofing toilet rolls around his lounge. Jimmy White was spurred to victory against James Watanar after watching The Sopranos. And Rude Van Nistelrooy claims he wouldn't be the goal scorer he is if he didn't eat sponge cake every day. Cakes play a big part in the Old Trafford setup. There were rumours Rio Ferdinand missed his drugs test because he'd had a spotted dick. <laughs> Johnny Wilkinson learned his skills kicking a toilet roll around his bedroom. It was around the same time his mum learned to wipe her ass with a rugby ball. <laughs> David Steen, your subject is Sporting Sidelines, which looks at the various money-making schemes of leading sportsmen. And your three are... Scribes West publican and sometime England boss Terry Venables. Stadium clambering Aussie tennis player Pat Cash. You're messing with dynamite. And bubble permed former hero of the cop Craig Johnston. If they don't mean what they say. Who was in goal there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was less silly. Yeah. <laughs> May as well have been. <laughs> <laughs> but which one is behind an anti junk mail campaign? Who's invented a new kind of mini bar payment system? And which of them invented the thingy ma wig? A fetching hat and wig combination. David's team. If I'd have had my ponytail then, when that goal went in, I could just jump straight over him and save it, couldn't I? What, you mean you can't jump without a ponytail? That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special power. Sometimes it gets a bit too long. <laughs> Well, I can't believe a footballer would be involved in making a minibar, you know, cost them more, would it? No, it's right. It's not, it's not going <laughs> to help is. them behave better in hotels, is it? You take something out of the minibar and it charges automatically. Is that right? Is that how it works? Yeah, basically. That, so that means you can't sort of drink the white wine, piss in the bottle and put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, Rory. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> Come on. No, Greg Johnson, he loves the inventions because <clears throat> he was the guy behind the uh, Predator boot, so I reckon it was him and the drinks machine. Yeah. Ben is... Ridiculous hair dodgy hair thing. Yeah, right. Pat Cash. And Pat Cash mail. the jump now. Three points, well done. Yeah. 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 Yeah, in fact, it was Terry Venables who came up with the fantastic idea of combining hats and wigs so women could leave the house with their hair and curlers. Pat Cash is the founder of Planet Arc, a junk mail recycling company. And among Craig Johnston's many inventions is the Butler, a sensor device which automatically sends a message to the hotel phone every time you use the mini bar. Terry Venables has been in football for four decades. He started out earning just £20 a week, and according to his tax return, he still does. <laughs> 
Black Cash has been busy recently as there's been a dramatic increase in the volume of junk mail, especially in the last couple of weeks, largely due to a particularly annoying mail shot reading, Goalkeeper, available for coaching, will bring own gloves and ponytail. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have eight points and Phil's team have nine. Time to manhandle sporting celebrities now as we play Field of Sportsman. David and Rory, your turn first. If you could wander up, take your blindfolds with you, please. It's on the floor there, David. <laughs> that right. is me. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> OK, can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your time starts now. Now, David, what we are that? due. We are due a nubile young woman. We haven't had one all <laughs> series. <laughs> Speak for yourself, mate. <laughs> God, she's gorgeous. <laughs> she's one. <laughs> I've lost all. Hello. Oh. What's this? What's... <laughs> oh. There was a time when it was done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. Here she that is. Gone, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, quite nice. Aye, aye. Hello, very skinny. He's got very hairy arms for a woman. <laughs> What's this here? I know what this is. It's, uh, it's the new Stanner Stirlift. <laughs> oh, this is, um... For the wrinkly who likes to take risks. <laughs> Good oh, Lord. I know, I know. Jonathan, this is better than your car. It's got no bleeding wheels either. <laughs> it's a jet ski, isn't it? Jet ski? Yeah. Jet ski. Good. I mean, more than that. <laughs> Jet ski? It's a jet ski. Has it come from Chelsea? <laughs> it's a jet ski, Raya. Yeah. Jet ski uh, oh. champion. A champion of <laughs> Europe, the world. Well, Indeed, the the world European and British jet ski champion, <laughs> Jordan Fielder. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well done. Phil and Jonathan, your turn now. If you'd like to take your positions. <laughs> tell you what, let me say something. Wait, wait, let me say something. I tell you, I'm losing the circulation there and round the middle. Are you getting excited? <laughs> you look like a camp thunderbird. This is what the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's a brother who said, you're not getting me up in one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Okay. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? OK. And your time starts now. Cool. We're surrounded. Hold on. There's a little one with a cap on. I've got a little one. And a big one. You've got, got one as well? Oh, Has I've he got, got a cap on? Yeah. Is, it, is it a Cranky's convention? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a stick here or something. What's that? <laughs> now, you're holding it the wrong way up, mate. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Nicholas, is it the Chelsea subs oh. bench? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a big fella up here. How many are there, Phil? How many are there? There's five in the back. How many is at the front? One, two. Oh, this is a oh, giant up here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Phil, have a feel of this one. Two. He's too big. He's been taking drugs or something. <laughs> <laughs> there's ten. There's ten of them. Is it the Arsenal side after half time? <laughs> is there this one? I think this is a lady at the front here. Yeah? Tell you oh, what. Well, that's blown mine, bloody. You want to switch the head and shoulders? Your ends are going. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've got a cricket bat. It's a cricket side. Hold on, I punched cricket someone. It's a cricket team. Is it? It's not the other. Is there and come and get me, all right? Come on, there's ten of them there. Phil, you would be the eleventh. Who is it? Lashings. It is Lashings. Lashings well cricket team. Don't you? Yeah. 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 Let's let's just see how well Phil knows his teammates. Keep your blindfold on, Phil. I'm going to go back. See if you can name the players one by one <laughs> with your blindfold on. I don't know who they are. Must, one of them must be Richie Richardson. Yeah, but which one? That's oh, OK. <laughs> Go for the hat. That one, the one with yeah, the big hat. That's the skipper. Well that's done. skipper. <laughs> God, I've forgotten all their names. I'm usually <laughs> pissed when I tell them. All right, we're <laughs> Let's 
not embarrass you anymore, Phil. Take the blindfold off, mate. No. Well done. Hello, 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 Thank you very much to Rushing. Martin McKay, Collins King, Richard Richardson, Alvin Kelly-Turan, Sean Edwards, Alan Ingleson, Henry Alonga, Mohamed Elkham, Franklin Rose and Luther Blissett, ladies and gentlemen. OK, so after all that, Dent's team have 11 points and Phil's team have 12. Okay, we finish as ever with the name game. The team in the league goes first, which is Phil's team. John, can you pass those along to Jonathan, I'm please? I'm feeling good. As many gonna, names as you can in your allotted go. amount of time. And your time starts now. Okay, uh, tennis player. First name is uh, first part of the Orient, the team. Leighton. Leighton Hewitt. Yep, well done. All right, this was a footballer. He's in the jungle right now. He's what you're saving. Yeah, Neil Ways of Ruddock. Uh, mm, mm. Oh, mm. Feel <laughs> <laughs> What am I doing? Oh, so see, stop it like that. You know, pinches. Pinches. pinches, and the first name oh, is Barry. Uh, Barry Pinches. Barry pinches. Barry well pinches. done. All right, this is the dad of the girl who get on with the John Leslie. Titmus, uh, Freddie Titmus. Freddie Titmus. Well done. All right, this is a. Uh, I don't know. His second name is what we all are. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're, what species are we? What genus do humans. we come? We're humans. humans. That's right. And the first name is the name of the coyote who used to chase a uh, roadrunner. Oh. You know, Acme. Acme. Not Acme, that's the country the stuff on. Oh, oh, what was his name? Wiley. 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 All right. Okay. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well done on the play, OK. I didn't know. Seven. Don't tell me off. Seven. You need seven. Pass those down to Roy, please. You can do seven. You can do seven. <laughs> Okay. We will get two. Your time starts <laughs> right now. Okay. It works on your show, Kelly Hare, sexist. Jeremy Clark. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> English manager of Spurs. Like Fleet? David Fleet. No, 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 no. English manager of Spurs. Yeah, yeah he used to be he used to be Spurs manager. You know. Hoddle. No, he's we, we, Barcelona <laughs> manager as well. Terry Venables. Elsa, yeah. Um, chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim. Chimney. Chiru. Mary yeah. Chiru. Yeah. Uh, Chiru. Know what I mean, Harry? Frank Chiru. <laughs> <laughs> Second name. Bruno Sharif. Bruno Sharif. <laughs> 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 a TV, a TV commentator, sports commentator and presenter. <laughs> a person who gubs is a... Tony. Tony. No, go on. A, a person who gubs is a gubber. Yeah, very good yeah. indeed. Yeah. Um, Chelsea were... Uh, uh, they were robbed against Chelsea in the FA Cup. This team. Scarborough. Um, and uh, think of the comic character Desperate. Dan, Dan. Scarborough, Dan. Dan Scarborough. Dan Scarborough, more like... Scarborough, yeah. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> He'll sort you out with something. Defender Manchester United. <laughs> luck. Think luck. Lucky. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm looking forward to meeting Scarborough Dan one day. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of all that, Davis team have 16, but this week's winner is Phil's team with 17. <laughs> So thanks to Phil, Jonathan and John, David, Rory and Richard. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Jim Davidson's commercial breakdown is after the news, which is next here on BBC One. Over on BBC Two in half an hour, it's Newsnight. Are you a budding writer with a sports tale to tell? Why not enter Five Live Sports Shorts writing competition? For more details, check out bbc.co.uk slash 5live.